Hey guys, uh, Matt here. I hope you're all doing really good. Um, so I've been meaning to do one of these videos for absolutely ages um, where I can give you a kind of a behind the scenes look into uh, the writing process, the demo process and the production that goes into it. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been meaning to do this for ages, um, but I had lots of technical issues trying to screen record um, and capture it in stereo without getting uh, too geeky. Um, but I finally worked out how to do it. And uh, so I thought, what better way to do this than to share uh, a new track that I'm working on, um, which I submitted to uh, the others uh, a few weeks ago. Um, I've only written a couple of sections for this, so, um, but I thought I'd, I'd, sometimes I just send over bits and pieces just to kind of see if the vibes there and um, luckily it was with this one um, so I'm gonna carry on writing uh, this one I'm not gonna do the writing in this actual video this is just gonna be a sort of a quick uh, dare I say it quick behind the scenes look into um, what I've done so far how I go about uh, writing it yeah just to kind of give you a bit of an insight really into um, the work that goes into it so some of you might find this interesting some of you may not uh, but let me know because um, yeah if, uh, if, if there's interest in this um, I will do more of these videos. And uh, as I say, I will do another video where I actually uh, work on the next section of the song um, and I'll capture that. Um, I also want to do it eventually uh, through a live stream. Uh, I'm not quite at that stage yet. Um, I know Dan's been doing a lot of um, uh, writing sessions through the live streams along with his uh, awesome performance live streams. Um, but yeah, once I've worked out that side of things, um, I might dive into that as well if anyone's interested. Um, so that could be fun. So without further ado, let's check out this track that I'm currently working on and uh, yeah, I'll break it down and try and go through uh, some of the thought process behind um, the ideas and yeah, we'll go into it. So I'm going to go to the corner of the screen. All right. So you can see on the screen uh, the project that I'm currently working on. So I've got two sections here. We've got the, uh, the first bit here is what I'm hearing is like a chorus. And uh, the next bit here is what I'm hearing as a verse. Um, I intentionally wrote it to be a verse anyway. So uh, anyway, let's check it out. And um, hopefully my computer will be able to cope because I'm recording the screen in stereo. And I'm also running a lot of plugins with this particular project. So it might cut out every now and again, but let's um, keep the fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, anyway, here's the demo. Hey, right, cool. It survived. When I was playing it back earlier, it kept uh, kept cutting out. So we managed to catch the whole thing there, which is cool. So yeah, that's the demo so far. So if you've seen any of my um, recent YouTube videos, uh, you might actually recognize uh, this section because uh, I've actually been using this music over the outros of my videos just because I kind of like the vibe of it and I think it works really well. But anyway, there we go. Uh, so it's already getting a little bit of use, um, but hopefully we can turn it into a, a full song. So anyway, let's uh, let's let's check out the um, this first bit. This is where the uh, idea kind of stemmed from. So I had this sort of octave uh, idea. Um, so if I solo up the octaves, this is um, the first idea. So yeah, that was kind of like the, the first thing that I kind of started messing around with. Mm. 
Um, yeah, so, and then underneath that, I was sort of hearing this uh, rhythm part. So I then started to layer it up with um, these sort of chords underneath. <laughs> Um, so we can check that out. Um, I've actually recorded that same part. I'll go into um, the way I do this. So I do a thing called double tracking. Um, so if we take this uh, rhythm part here. So what I've done here, this is actually um, the same sound, but I've recorded it twice. This is known as double tracking. So uh, what I then do is pan one left and pan one right. So here's the left side. And then here is the right side. So then when you put the two together, it gives this this nice wide sort of stereo image. So um, what I've done with this though, is um, I've actually done that three times with different sounds. So here's the next sound I've done that exact same thing with. And then I've done that with this sound as well. So um, I don't always do that, but I, I just really loved each of these sounds. And I think it was a case I couldn't decide which one I preferred. And then I kind of just thought, well, let's just do them all. And, and when I did them all, they just sound awesome. So let's hit them all together. So you just get this really big fat sound and um, if I sort of start taking them out and then put them back in again, you'll hear like a difference uh, to the, the overall sort of rhythmic sound. So if I do that. So yeah, individually they all sound really good, but um, yeah, I just kind of felt they all had that little pocket that they just sat in that just worked overall for this particular track. So yeah, um, so that's that's my three sort of rhythm parts. They're all pretty much doing the same thing. I, I think uh, two of them are tuned to drop D, which is what I'm in at the moment. And then I did one of them in just standard tuning, so it allowed me to uh, do this chord but still being able to hold down my sixth string. I think that was this one, the Cali. So there's three different amps, um, or well, they're, they're plugins. So the orange one up here is called the uh, Archetype Nolly. Uh, it's by Neural DSP. And then we've got the Cali and then the Archetype Pliny. So they're all different sort of amp models uh, to give you slightly different sounds. Um, yeah, and then the octave part is sort of blended in with that. So if I um, bring in the octave part it's really it's quite far back in the mix but it is there so what i'll do is i'll play it with the octave part in and then i'll take it out and you'll you'll hear it disappearing hopefully so here it is with it in So hopefully you can hear that hook line, bow, 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 um, dipping in and out there as I was sort of uh, taking it, taking it out, putting it back in. Um, yeah, so that's the guitar parts uh, for this bit. So lots of layering there. Um, I'm all about the vibes. Um, but yeah, before I actually record all of that, I'll put like a little um, guide down. Um, but then I actually focus on a drum pattern um, to then play along with uh, once I got the pattern down. So um, I would put a guide down. I'd probably just put like a rhythm down, so I'd start off with like that. But also um, the octave bit as well, so I can hear that movement. Bow, bow, bow. So I might take some of those accents in the pattern as well for the drums. Uh, so that'd be the next thing I do. Ah, oh, we got an overload. There we go. <laughs> this project is super CPU heavy because I've got so many plugins going on at the same time. But anyway, so that's the drum part. And um, what I would then do is put a bass part down. And uh, yeah, I just use the uh, uh, MIDI bass uh, within Logic. 
so um, yeah, very very basic, but in the mix it works well for me. Uh, here's the bass part. So yeah, just um, um, yeah, MIDI bass, pretty standard. Uh, but with the drums, um, that works really well for me. So that will give you uh, just a rough idea there um, of what's going on. So now that's that gives me my bed upon which I can work on and start layering up the other guitars. So then I'd go back now and start adding in the rhythm. So I'd then record this part with it. So this would be the next stage of the layer. And then I would have done uh, this one. So this is the Kali being added in this time. And then I would add in the Pliny. Um, may not have been this particular order, but you get the idea with like layering up the rhythm section. So here's the Pliny we added into that now. So yeah, now we've got that rhythm section down with the guitars and the drums and the bass, and then I can layer up the octave part over the top, um, which is now this. So there, there we go. Um, now the octave parts are really far back in the mix, but the, the way my thought process goes with this sort of thing is that this is potentially going to be a chorus. So I don't really want that octave line to sort of get in the way of whatever the vocal line is going to do. So again, it's all about the song. It's not necessarily making that that uh, hook sort of stand out too far. Uh, but that's just my own way of sort of mixing it in and just to give it the vibe. Um, cool. Uh, so that's the chorus so far. And then the last thing I added in with this is the synth part. And you might be wondering, ah, oh, synth. New device don't normally have uh, synth in their tracks, but actually we we uh, we, we do have a lot of uh, synthy kind of bits and pieces in our records just to kind of, um, yeah, give it that little bed of, uh, of vibe. Uh, more recently, I would say, actually. Um, so here's the synth anyway uh, that I've used on this one. Really cool sounding synth. Now, by itself, it's, um, I mean, I think it's a cool sound by itself, but um, it probably sounds like, oh my goodness, like that's going to sound a bit mad in like this sort of tune. Um, but if I now bring that in and uh, you'll see that it's sort of, it's there, but it's just underneath everything. So it's not sort of an offensive level, <laughs> should I say. Uh, so let's listen to that without it and then I'll, I'll sort of bring it in. And you might not notice it that much unless you're using headphones to listen to this free. Uh, so let's check that out. So here it is without. And now I'll bring it in. It is quite hard to hear it, but it's just there as like this little layer uh, pad just underneath everything. Uh, just going and I love it. It's really, really cool. I'll solo it up with the drums and uh, the first rhythm guitar, the Nolly over here. Um, check this out. If I take that out now, you'll, you'll, you'll hear that disappear. And then back in. So it's there, but it's just sort of really subtle, especially then when all the other guitars are blended in with it. So yeah, it's just adding that little bit of vibe, but perhaps, um, you know, not everyone would necessarily realize it's there, but it is there. So um, anyway, there we go. And um, and it makes me feel uh, inspired when I've got those sort of textures going on uh, in that section. Um, yeah, so that's, um, that's the chorus that I've got. Um, which I'm really excited about. I think it's got a, a good energy, a good vibe. Also, when I'm double tracking um, the guitars, um, I'm actually recording uh, two separate, uh, even though they are the same, um, I am 
recording one for the left. So this one um, here will be one rhythm guitar part, and then uh, I'll record this side for the right um, as a separate part. Although I am playing the same thing, it's not a case of copying and pasting those two parts because then you run into phasing issues. You can get around that. Uh, you can like drag uh, the file ever so slightly out with the other one, but um, yeah, I just prefer to record a separate part to keep it sort of real, really, um, even though they all look pretty much the same. You can actually see that the wave format is different if I zoom in on the orange ones here. Um, yeah, you can see where where you got the spikes on the lower one and not on the top one. So you can see the waveform is different where I've recorded a separate part. Anyway, going a bit geeky there, but um, yeah, there you go. And all right, let's check out the verse then. So for this, I wanted like a, a kind of a vibey um, sort of uh, thing going on. So uh, if we check out the guitars first, um, we've got uh, this. So yeah, using um, again one of the plugins that um, I've used previously on the rhythm track, but this is like more of a clean uh, sort of sounding part. Uh, I call it the pushed clean uh, because it's got a little bit of uh, bite to it. I can show you on here. So this is the plugin I'm using for this sound, and it's just super vibey for like those arpeggiated. The center because my preset is apparently saved for hard left. There we go. Give that some more juice. There we go. So, yeah, then my um, sort of vibey chords um, that I kind of came up with for this progression. Um, so just kind of like an arpeggiated kind of thing. The chords are really simple, but when you find those little arpeggio sort of uh, parts, just gives it a little bit of, um, yeah, bit of an atmosphere. Um, came up with a really mad stretch for this one, but this is what I was hearing. So that's a bit of a mad one. <laughs> and then the last one, nice, easy open one. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's the guitar part. So again, I double tracked that. So I recorded one for the left side. Uh, so you'll hear that uh, on this one. You'll hear and coming on the right side there is actually the um, the stereo delay that I've got going on. So the actual part is panned all the way to the left, but the delay is sort of ping ponging left and right. So if I play that first chord, you can hear that ping pong. Um, so I've double tracked that part, one on the left, one on the right, and then on both of them you've got the, the stereo delay. So it's just creating this really awesome uh, ambience uh, on that section. Here's the right side. And then put them together and you've got that nice stereo image. They've both, but they've both got that delay effect going on. So, uh, yeah, that's the guitar part. Uh, so then on top of that, we've got the, the drum beat. So, again, I'd always sort of put a beat down. Um, so we had the beat with that. This was one of those parts where I wasn't sure whether to go half time with boom, boom, gap. Boom, 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 So, boom, ba, down, down, boom, boom, But I thought it might drag a little bit, so I kept it sort of double time um, to kind of keep the keep the beat going, but the guitar part's nice and vibey. Uh, then you got the bass rolling with that, so I add that in next. So you've got the rhythm section keeping that drive going, and then the guitars are kind of creating that air. Um, and then don't forget, I'm also thinking about a vocal part that's going to go on top of that. So, um, yeah, the rhythm section is just kind of keeping that 
that sort of part move in but then um we want that extra room for the vocal to breathe whatever that might be you're not sure yet but um yeah uh sometimes i'll come up with some melody ideas for this or sometimes i'll just send it over to dan and um yeah so he's got like a canvas really to do whatever he wants on but uh sometimes i'll write a part and i just hear a, a melody straight away and um sometimes we'll use it sometimes we don't um just depends really um so that's the drums bass and guitar So the next thing I added to this part, believe it or not, <laughs> was another synth part. Um, so let's check this little synth out. I've, I love the, this synth and I've used it a lot. Um, if you happen to have a copy of the last EP we did, Kuroshi, um, you might spot this sound um, buried in uh, some of the tracks, the new tracks we released, in particular Wake Up. Um, yeah, let me know if you uh, recognize this sound, but I often use this as just like another little bed to keep that vibe going. Um, so this is the synth all by itself. So yeah, real kind of vibey sort of sound. Um, let's hear that with the guitar part and you'll see how that all starts to come together come together here we go so if we listen to that without the little synth underneath and now chuck it back in I was debating whether to not have it on the first half um, and I think what made the decision to bring it in for the first half was because I then added this piano part in. If we listen to that bit now, um, really basic piano part to start with, just the, the root notes. I, I just love the sound of piano, just adds that nice texture uh, to parts. So because I added that to it, um, I then developed the second half using the piano. So I changed um, the piano on the second half here. So if we listen to that with the guitars, So you're getting some of those sort of counter melodies going with the arpeggios. Bow, bow, bow down. Um, and I did that on the guitar as well, actually. I did another track down here. So here's the uh, guitar doing that same melody. I think I came up with the guitar part first and then decided to replicate it on the piano as well. Uh, you'll hear, again, if you're listening in headphones, if you listen through your phone, then you're not going to get the full experience of this. But uh, if you listen in the headphones uh, or a decent uh, stereo system, you'll hear that that guitar part, I've just panned a little bit to the left. And it's so it's kind of up here. Um, so my rhythm parts, I always pan hard left and hard right. So you kind of get them uh, down here or the, the sensation, I guess, of hearing them down here. And then um, when I pan sort of up here, this is what you're hearing with this guitar part. So if you hear that in context with the let's chuck the bass drums and piano. So the piano is sort of down the middle in terms of the stereo image and then that guitar is just off to the left. So it just gives it that bit of separation rather than having them both down the middle. And then if I bring the rhythm guitars back in for this clean section, you'll hear them far left and far right. So 
So yeah, everything's got a little bit of separation there. Um, that's just how I like to uh, to mix that sort of stuff in. And then obviously the synth, I bring the synth back in. And that is my verse section. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to... Uh, to get the next bit sort of written. As I say, I'm not gonna do that for this video because otherwise this is gonna be a super long video. I'll do a separate video just filming and capturing me doing the next part um, if anyone's interested in that and sort of uh, um, coming along for the journey, I guess, um, and sharing the experience and kind of what goes into, yeah, the, the actual writing aspect of it. I hope you enjoyed that little bit of uh, an insight. I'm going to do more of these um, style videos uh, because we've got all the other demos that we're working on and I can sort of dive into the process of what happens after I've sent these off to the guys and then getting them back with stuff. Um, and uh, I can go through some of the old uh, demos that we've done. Uh, we could also look at Wake Up, if anyone's interested in looking at that, I've got the, uh, or certainly, yeah, I think I've got the, the, the first demo I did of that, and then it's sort of um, uh, you, the developments of that demo as I got the vocals back from Dan and whatnot. But anyway, if anyone's interested in that, let me know, and I'll, uh, I'll look into doing any specific songs that you might be interested in. But uh, this is sort of focusing more on the new stuff at the moment that we're working on. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and I'll see you soon.